this is Bernard Allison, and this is our latest CD, which is my seventh album, titled Across the Water. Please check it out, you know, it's such a pleasure to be here with you guys on guitar.com. But I ain't gonna hold back no more. Played with Copa Taylor for, you played with her right out of high school, didn't you? Yeah, like four days out of high school, I got the call from Coco. <laughs> you know, like, like we, I'd like you to become a member of the Blues Machine. And, you know, I knew at that time there's so many more guitar players out there that were more qualified for it. And I was like, why me? You know, and her, apparently her and my dad had talked and he said, you know, once he gets out of school, you know, I'm going to be in Europe during this period. So if, if you have faith in his plan, you know, take him out and teach him the rules of the road, basically. And um, Coco's a sweetheart. You know, I just had a chance to open up for her last week at Philadelphia Blues Festival and just start talking about the old times. It's like my second mother, basically. But I was too young to be in the clubs then, so she was like my legal guardian on the road. What kind of stuff did you learn from playing with her band musically? I think more or less to be a rhythm player and learn how to follow someone. Because learning, I always played by myself. And um, then I, I got, kind of got a couple groups together during school, but never really played out or anything at all. Just to be able to back someone, and I think that if I didn't do that then, it probably I probably wouldn't have any knowledge of rhythm now, for the fact that I'd just be concentrating on singing and soloing. So I think that's the the most influential thing that I learned from Coco. She uh, plays a lot of tunes in her repertoire. I'm sure that are are blue standards. Right. Did. Uh, did you learn like a, a variety of, let's say, chord progressions that, that you have since then built your music upon? Well, basically with Coco, it's, it was kind of simple for me um, because it was basically your traditional rhythm and blues, rhythm and blues plus blues patterns, 12 bar blues. Um, there's a couple songs like her trademark songs like Wang Dang Doodle example where each guitar player actually has a part to play, like one's playing the actual bass line with the basses, or I was actually playing the charm part that Buddy actually recorded. Ding, 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 and you know, do, do the charm, and um, so that was something different for me because that's the only thing I had to play in the song. So I'm like, what do I do the rest of the song, you know? So I kind of dance with it along and wait till the, you know? That was my part, you know? That was my only part there, so, you know. Can you do that again? I just... And actually, um, she showed me that part because she said, yeah, buddy, that's all he played on the record, which actually is the kind of, the note that really, the hook of the song, you know, we got a picture of Wayne Day Doodle all night long. <laughs> all night long. All of <laughs> So we had two guitar players where that's almost kind of impossible to do the both. So you had the continuous line. <laughs>
after you played with Coco for a while, you did your own thing for a little bit. Yeah, and that was kind of like a combination of um, playing songs of my father's that I that I really liked, and a lot of like Muddy Waters type things, or even an Albert King thing. Um, Albert was probably my greatest influence as far as a guitar player. He, the tone just did something to me, and you know, even Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Buddy Guy, they all kind of got something from each other, you know. And that's the thing about the blues is you you kind of get something from everybody and mix it all up and create yourself. Try to find yourself with it, you know. And uh, so, like some bluesy things, I like to do slow blues like an Albert King or Stevie Ray style, you know. Estimate the garbage man Garbage man, garbage man Everyone seems to underestimate the garbage man But if you want to know just why one stay you better ask your garbage man. Not like the Albert Albert King approach that we use also. When you kind of tore apart all those guys, um, and I know you say they shared everything, you know, they learned from each other and mixed stuff up and, and right. out. And I um I play a lot off of my feeling actually. So like things like I had the idea on my last album, in fact, I wrote a song called Can't Get You Out of My Mind where I wanted it to be kinda like a, a Texas type shuffle. A cross between Stevie Ray Vaughan and Albert somehow, and uh, with a with a nice hook to it. So it, it kind of went like this. When I first met you, baby, you were only seventeen. Knew right away, you're the one for me The way you smile and carry yourself I can't imagine her having no one else Go behind, what do you have to strong? Now it's time to bring your vines at home Cause I can't get you out of my mind I can't get you out of my mind I 
Well, let's get that kind of Texas shuffle bounce type of going in the rhythm of the guitar. Like Stevie had that stuff really good. It's pretty much the same, just the upstroke of the guitar. Mm -hmm. 